<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Grandma Talks. These are your hosts, Maddie and her oh. grandma. Oh. <laughs> and this is episode number 10. We're back. How That's amazing. Amazing. It is amazing. And today, we figured we would just... I, I was going to ask her questions out of this question book we had. Now, of course, it relates to life, but I thought it would be fun. And then I also, I didn't mention this to you, but I've got a this or that book as well. That oh, great. To work through. You know, I should have asked you where we were going with these questions because I have no idea. I know. So. Usually I, I screen <laughs> the questions before we start, but. I'm testing you. Not I'm trusting you, right? I've got your back. Don't worry. Mm. Thank you. Should we tell the audience anything new going in our lives, going on in our lives, or no? I think we're pretty much we're at a standstill. Yeah. Actually, we're still waiting for your mom to make recovery. Uh, we're looking for um, time and place and where to for our transfer. Um, your youngest sister is living with us right now. She's getting ready to make a trip. Um, that's pretty much what's going on. Same. Same. I am now fully back to being online because of the crazy spike in the cases. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so this week has been a little bit different, but you know, I'm still yeah. here. I'm still going. <laughs> yeah. We're still doing what we were doing, aren't we? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and uh, we have to talk about our little gathering we had, our social distance gathering that we had yes. on Saturday. <clears throat> yes. We met, we met in March with just our family, which is my brother and sister and one of our cousins uh, at, at their place uh, next door, because my brother lives next door to them and temporarily and uh we had we did uh pop all grilled hot dogs and we brought pop luck pot luck and we had a great social time it was fun yeah it was fun. it was nice and we we uh we were nice to each other and refrained from hugging and didn't get close and <laughs> This is the time of year we usually have the big, huge family reunion, which is all of our cousins on our mother's, on my mother's side of the family. And yeah. there's usually about yeah. 100 people that gather uh, the second weekend in July. Most of the time it's the second weekend in July. We meet at a, at a park, city or state park. It's been the same one for the last few years. It was the, the Mother Neff State Park uh, since... Uh, 1929 and uh, yeah and when it flooded we had to move to the city park in Gatesville and um, it's the Doolittle Clawson family and uh, we've been meeting there ever since so we have lots of cousins we still have uh, two uncles and an aunt that are alive and uh, all of them in their 90s well Aunt Nova's 89 mm -hmm. so you hear about Uncle Jan? yes <laughs> we have an uncle who just got married. He's, he's 96? He'll be 97 this August. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we never give up. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's right. There was uh, um, Mary Lou, his daughter, yeah. posted something on Facebook that said, don't worry. Uncle JF wanted me to warn you guys, or to uh, tell you guys that Mandy is not pregnant. <laughs> His wife. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, and we've maintained God. our sense of humor, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, when his, his first wife, Long, and she had been, I mean, his wife for, what, 60 years or so, I don't know. Aunt Mary. Years either, Aunt Mary. Our Aunt Mary, when she died, it was a couple of years later that he said he was looking for someone in their 60s uh, that hopefully to take care of him in his old age. So I don't know how old his new wife is, but I think she fits the bill. So yeah. <laughs> good for him. 
and everyone seems to be okay with it. So I mean, he's ninety-seven, almost ninety-seven. What, yeah. what are we gonna do? Argue with him? <laughs> That's right. Tell him he's making a mistake. <laughs> so it, and he's known this lady for some time. So yeah. and she's she looks like she's quite a bit younger. So I don't think she's in her nineties. <laughs> Or even 80s. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't say she's a day older 70. Oh. <laughs> and that may be aging her. Uh, that may be being ugly. So <laughs> good for him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Good for him. So so shall we get on with these questions? You just go when, whenever you're in charge. They're super random. There's, I think there's only like one that's pretty serious. Um, the rest are just for fun. So my first one is what words or phrases do you overuse? Well, I think you would be better at answering that one. <laughs> so you overuse, uh, this used to be a joke between Chris and I, or was it Chris and I, maybe Josie was involved in it. I don't know, but you would say you ought to do this, like hinting at what we need to do. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, that was one of them. And then saying Dern was another one. I think uh -huh. I got, we got everybody in the family to say Dern uh, <laughs> instead of Dern yeah. or Dang. <laughs> or th there's a couple of other words that could be used. Yeah. <laughs> Dern. And then I, I don't think I, I noticed that you say anything else pretty. Somebody mocked me uh, with saying, oh, gravy. So uh, I used that instead of a cuss word. So <laughs> You don't really cuss. I, don't, I think I've maybe heard you cuss no. maybe five or ten times. I used to. You know, I was raised around the military base, so I could cuss pretty much like anybody. Probably better than most, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. when I went to work for a pediatrics group, when you use it in your everyday language, you aren't even aware that you're using it, those words. So when you're around little kids all the time, yeah, uh, it makes you very aware of what you're saying. So I purposely quit using it in my language. And of course, there is a biblical tenet, you know, the Lord says for us not to speak foolish words, uh, to be careful of what comes out of our mouths. So that reinforced the fact that I need to be careful besides that. When you were a little girl, your favorite word was uh, S-H-I-T. <laughs> and this was when you were learning how to talk well, two or three years old. And uh, we had to, uh, your grandfather accused me of being the reason that that was your favorite word. I'm sure your mother had something to do with it too. Or my dad. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we worked really hard and your babysitter at the time kept telling us if you didn't stop using that word, she was going to have to wash your mouth out with soap. So, which she did. I think a couple of times, you know, and she washed your mouth out with soap like my mother washed my mouth out. She scraped the soap on our teeth. <laughs> yeah, so that kind of gets you over using <laughs> those words. So, but she warned you three times, Maddie, don't do that. I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. So when you got your mouth washed out, the rest of us all decided we better pay attention. <laughs> yeah. So we all quit using those words. <laughs> I'm sure, when, like, I don't really ever hear, um, well, I hear Papa cuss a little bit, but all the ladies that I work with, I, I don't hear them cursing. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. once you get older, it kind of fades away, right? No, you I know? don't think so. I know oh, some no. that, <laughs> I know that some that, I think it's the person that you hang with, <laughs> yeah. you know, just like anything in life, you know? The people you hang with determine a lot of the way you are. So, yeah, that's the reason. So I've substituted. That's like when you were learning to cuss, when you were little, we were with a group of people and one of them kept saying, all you have to do is think of an alternative word. So, see, I've used alternative <laughs> words. 
Dern and gravy. <laughs> okay, question number two. Which talent would you most like to have? Oh, gosh. I know, that's, that's a big question. That's a big question. Yeah. I would love to be able to play the piano. Oh. I would love. I took lessons and so frustrated my teacher, you know, because every young woman of a proper family took piano lessons and dance lessons, and they might as well have just thrown their money out the door. <laughs> I, I know, no way. I mean, I can, I can pick out, you know, a couple of notes, but uh, I have two, we have several cousins um, who can play beautifully. And your mom, when she was growing up, could play. One of my favorite things was when she would decide to practice the piano and I'd be working around the house and she'd be playing, just practicing and I'd be working and that was just the best. I mean, you have your own concert going, you know. So yeah. I would love to be able to be music. I wish I were musically inclined. I can't carry a note, even though I sing and Papa just goes hush, but who cares? And um, I had one cousin, um, Patty, who I was extremely close to, who could draw. She could paint and draw. And it was, I always envied that talent. Uh, not only could she do that, but she could play the piano beautifully. We would sit for hours while and sing old show tunes and just at the piano entertaining ourselves. So mm -hmm. yeah, that I would love to have been that talented. Not happening here. Can't draw a stick. <laughs> Can't play a note. <laughs> I hope I have a child who's either a singer or dancer or theater one of those yeah because I, I think that a talent i would like to have like in my next life or in my past life i was definitely doing broadway yeah <laughs> i was singing and dancing yeah and playing instruments i i know that i was i was performing yeah. for sure so that would be cool if i could you come from a long you come from a line of people who like to perform, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Whether because they love it or they're selfish people. <laughs> yes. Well, your great grandfather was a performer. That's he loved to get on stage. So, and he loved to put everybody else on stage too. So, my dad loved to get on get on the stage. Yeah. So, that was my first major. I was going to teach drama, and I was going to I was going to be a history and drama teacher. So. Didn't work. And drama. Yeah. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Because history uh, is like drama to me. So. History is not like A big drama. story. <laughs> a big story? No. Big story. Yeah. You want to tell a it? Big story. Huh? Do you want to tell it? No way. You're, you're saying that um, drama and history are big stories. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I thought you had a big story to tell. No, I don't have a big story. <laughs> like, if, if you got it. I mean, we've got time. Yeah. No, I'm. A, I'm. A, I got little stories. <laughs> <laughs> this one. This next one is fun. Where would you most like to live? Like, take us out of the equation, or or say we would follow you anywhere you went. Because I, I know that you want to live the closest to family, but yeah, vacation. Where would you choose? Uh, the tropics. Oh. Where I could see the ocean. Oh, really? Really. I thought you would um, be more inclined to live somewhere where it's cold and... Yeah. I don't know. Moderate. I like moderate temperatures. Okay. So, you know, somewhere between uh, 70 and 75. You know, right in there. So if you had to pick anywhere in the U.S., where would you live? Uh, if I could afford it. Yeah. Uh, I would be in Hawaii. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've never been there. 
but I really want to go. Yeah, I was blessed to live there when uh, when it became a state. And if y'all don't know, it became a state in 1959. I did not know that. Yeah, I happened to be there. Wow. Uh, I'm so old. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that was 10 years before my mom was born. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it was, it was, that was before uh, everybody wanted to move there. So, you know, when the, the most important hotel was the Royal Hawaiian, um, there was, you know, like three hotels on the beach. That was it. So, um, yeah, I would, uh, I, it, it's just a lovely place. So, I've been back twice. Would love to go back more. My mom and dad used to go every year. Oh, really? Yeah. They would go every year or every other year at least to visit. So they love to take a trip. Yeah. We need to take a trip. Maybe in a couple of years. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay, this one, this one I think might be the most serious because the rest are kind of funny. Uh okay. <laughs> Should parenting classes be mandatory for new parents? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I've always thought it's kind of God's joke that you, you know, that it's so easy to have babies. Um, it is. It is. And um, my heart bleeds for those people who don't want those babies or abuses those babies. Um, because they are so precious. So every life is precious. And it would be lovely if we could. Um, and for those people who have those babies and don't want them, if they would know to give them to others who do, um, you know, that would be my wish. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's too bad we don't have classes in parenting. So. I think we do parenting classes, but also uh, go to therapy and work. Mm. So, yeah, <laughs> like like kind of like they do the marriage counseling. Yeah, you need like uh, personal counseling before you even think about. Right. It. Like imagine that for from like twenty six to twenty eight, you had to go like it was mandatory for everyone in the world. Yeah, at age to go to therapy. <laughs> if I were in charge of the world, <laughs> yeah. hey, there, there are way too many parents who don't know what the heck they're doing. Yes, yeah, I've and it's by the grace by the grace of God they get through it, and they some do. don't, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some kids yeah. turn out to be amazing, and then others just oh. <laughs> And there are so many fact, but you know, we have to remember parents aren't the only factor in people's lives. Yeah. You know, um, there are all sorts of outside influences that affect plus our genetics. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's not ever 100% the parent's fault if we're fault yeah. for anybody. We also have to be careful. You know, Hitler tried to make sure that he mastered the genetics of the human race. That was his part, one of his purposes in life was to kill off everything that was not acceptable in his mind. So, you know, this, we have to be real careful with humans and <laughs> our control of humans. That's <laughs> So, that's you know. why the cases are going up <laughs> because yeah. they are being so careful. <laughs> Yeah, I always thought I thought it was really funny that you know nobody could go to church, but we could all go to bars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and trust me, when you have a couple of drinks, yes, you are going to social distance. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we've talked about this, and it's no surprise. But we, I have a friend who lives near downtown. I think I told you this, and he said that the bars were full, full. <laughs> The bars were full, but they yes. you know, are, and I air quote, 25, 50% capacity, something yeah. like that. Yeah, right. But they sure. closed again, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think they're closed again. I don't know. I know the hospitals are closed again to visitors. Yes, yeah, so the bars should be. Yeah. 
<laughs> I hope so. So, I mean, you know, we went to a couple of restaurants, I will admit, but uh, I mean, there were three other tables <laughs> of people. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we went to Pluckers. We met Warren, uh, Pablo and I met Warren at Pluckers in wherever, but they there was only like six other people in the restaurant. It yeah. was crazy. It was so crazy. Weird. Well, you know the restaurant across from us, across the highway from us, that uh, Old West Cafe? Yes. You know, there's always people standing in line to get in there. <laughs> Papa and I went, and there were uh, four people in the place. Oh, my God. <laughs> so he said, I feel real good about this. <laughs> yeah. And Old West Cafe is, oof. Yeah. I haven't been there in, in forever. They they overfeed you and uh yeah, it's home cooking. It's like a super fancy, in my opinion, a much fancier cracker barrel. Yeah. I like Old West Cafe is way better than Cracker Barrel. Actually but, their uh, food their food is better. Speaking of eating, this is just for fun. Something you eat that other people would find gross. Hmm. I have a few of those. Do you have a few of those? I do. Um, beets. I know not everyone likes beets. Yeah, I love beets. Um, I'm looking at my fridge. <laughs> Josie, Josie just whispered sardines. <laughs> oh, yeah. You eat sardines? Yes. Oh, but you don't eat fish eggs? Or what are they called? The salmon yeah. roe? I don't. Caviar, I don't eat caviar. Caviar, that's what it is. I eat caviar, yeah. or I did for like one week in my life because I <laughs> saw it. It was on sale and I got it. I was like, oh, this this must be good because, you know, apparently it's got yeah so many more benefits than just eating regular salmon. So I was like, I'm going to get this little thing of fish eggs. And I started just pouring it on my actual eggs and it was okay. <laughs> I, never, I haven't bought them again. <laughs> Just the thought of it, fish eggs. I don't know. I can eat chicken eggs, but <laughs> wait, what are chicken eggs? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have that moment? <laughs> I had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's something about caviar. I think I've had it once in my life. I had that black caviar because we were we were in some fancy place, and I just went, mm, okay. This is not something I'm going to go out of my way to have. It yeah. just wasn't worth it. You know, some people um, like, you know, uh, Josie turns up her nose, uh, your sister, at me having sauerkraut. She thinks that's awful. I love, that was going to be my next thing is that I like sauerkraut. I love sauerkraut. Yeah. I hate it, but man, it tastes good. It tastes good. Um, I don't know. I don't think I eat anything. There's one thing that I have tried in the past that I will never have again. And that was in Hawaii, actually. And it was hoi. And it's from the taro root. And it tastes like you would imagine that wallpaper paste would taste. Ew. Yeah. That's the way it tasted to me. I tried it when I was a kid. When there was a fellow who was sitting across from me, I remember this just like it happened yesterday. He had been in, what, what, in the mainland, they call the continent of the U.S., and had not had any Hawaiian food for months and months. And we all, we were at a luau, and it, we all had poi, bowls of poi, and he um, ate every one of them. We, we gave them to him and said, here, you want mine? Um, but it's extremely nutritious, and it's probably saved the Hawaiian population from starving at some point in their history. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just, uh, just, yeah, it's slimy, as I remember it. It's kind of a brown-gray color, and mm, yeah, it's a root food, so... Yeah. 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 I'm just, you know, not one time I went to a Mexican restaurant and I 
we were having breakfast tacos. I can't remember who I was with, but I ordered, I think it was pork. Wait, yeah, pork. Yes, so I had egg and pork taco. And I was like, oh, so I'll just get like, obviously cooked pieces of pork is what you assume would come on a breakfast taco. And I don't know if this has another name, but when I got it, it was like raw pork. And when I bit into it, it was like a slimy slice of meat. Oh, really? And I think if Pablo was here, he would know what I was talking about, but it's a, it's a Mexican yeah. dish and it's like raw pork. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, yeah. that's what that reminded me of. And I nearly vomited when I bit that's, into it. That's kind of like the craze in Hawaii now is, uh, and I think in California, there may be some here too, the pokey. Oh yeah. yeah. Was, pa Pablo loves those. It's raw fish. Yuck. Yeah. We went to Colorado. Whenever we went to Colorado, we went on the food tour, the food and beer tour. I don't know if you remember me telling you about that. But yeah. Pizza and Mexican tacos and um, and then we had poke bowls and oh my gosh, that was the first and last time I ate the rice around. The yeah. <laughs> And then I guess it's kind right. of like having sushi. Uh, okay. Not a not a sushi fan. I like sushi. I like sushimi, which is cooked, but I don't like the raw sushi. Yeah. I'll oh. eat like the sushi that has this much crab. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a dollop of crab. Yeah, the rest is avocado and rice. Yeah, <laughs> I want it cooked. Thank you very much. Yeah. So that's like one time I was with. Uh, Dr. D and she she said, "Oh, the way to have tuna is just have it seared. Just uh, you know, they sear it on one side and quickly sear it on the other, and it's not raw in the middle. You'll love it." No. Ew! How do you chew that? You don't. <laughs> and swallow it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know that that we will disappoint anyone who's listening. Probably. It is a foodie. You know, that we are so unsophisticated. <laughs> I know quite a few people who like pokey. Yeah. Not a fan. No. And I'm sure they like seared tuna and yeah. all those other things. And I'm really glad for them. <laughs> <laughs> I will not fight them for their food, okay? <laughs> yeah, you can have it. I don't want You can it. have it, and I like that you like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have mine cooked. Thank you very much. <laughs> or I'll just have some steak. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Now I can do raw steak, a rare steak, but not raw. Yeah, I was gonna say raw. <laughs> yeah. I know people who eat raw meat too. Yeah. Disgusting. Well, your your great grandfather liked steak tartare, which is raw steak, but That's nasty. No, thank you. No thanks. I'm not into steak tartare either. So. Okay, I take it back about the last question being serious. I think this is probably the most serious. Oh no! How have you changed over the last five years? And the reason I'm asking this is because at your age, <laughs> I wanna know. <laughs> Do you think, are person? you constantly changing? <laughs> I've definitely changed in the last five years. Oh my God. Oh gosh, how have I changed? Well, I, again, that's another question that I think someone else could probably better answer about me than I can answer for myself, because I think sometimes I'm not that self-aware, actually. I just kind of go blundering through life, <laughs> doing what I do. Yeah. I think yeah. My, my brother would say I've lost some of my filters. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. You've always been like that. <laughs> Well, you know, I think honesty, if you don't get it from me, who are you going to get it from? Right? That's why. You know? That, it, that, that's what I tell Josie. Yeah. Who else is going to tell you the truth? Nobody. 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 And you know, that's the way I'd like somebody to be with me. You know, if your slip is hanging out, I'd like for someone to say, you know, Bev, your slip is hanging out. Yeah. Or, no, or if you got green stuff in your teeth. You know, tell me. I don't want to go around smiling and then look at the mirror in the bathroom and go, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, and if I can't be honest with my children and my grandchildren, who can I be honest with? 
you know, my memory is not so good that I can remember if I've told a story, a lie. So I might as well just tell the truth. And that way I don't have to try to remember what I said. There you so, go. Yeah. Um, it's strategy. Yeah. Well, it's easier for me. And I love y'all so much. I just want to be helpful. And I think I'm being helpful when I'm honest. So, yeah. um, what else? I think that I don't care about some things I used to care about because it's just not important anymore. You know, yeah. I used to be uh, really, really, really into my hobbies like genealogy. I mean, I would drive halfway across the country to get <laughs> some information. Part of it was an excuse to travel, but also, you know, I felt like I was accomplishing some great feat I think that's not so important in, to me anymore. The living there are much more important. Uh, spending time, you know, with with you got family has become paramount to me always. Uh, my job used to be really, really important, but I got to thinking, you know, when when it's all said and done, it's just a job. It's not a life. Um, so that, that changed, uh, <clears throat> my circumstances are not as important to me anymore. I'm so blessed that I'm healthy and have my brain and can, uh, do the things I do. I'm just so very thankful that the Lord's kept me together. Because by this time in life, my mother was in failing health. She was having difficulty uh, just standing up. Because of Parkinson's. <laughs> because of her, she had Parkinson's. And I'm so grateful that I'm able to work and I'm able to, you know, I ride my bike, every, my stationary bike in the mornings. I, um, I'm productive. I still keep a house, you know. She yeah. couldn't. Yeah. By this time, she couldn't. So, you know, those are the things that are important. That I'm not a burden on anyone. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good answer. Okay. Is that okay? Did I do yeah. good? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> I've got... Well, this is... <laughs> I have one more question left, but it's it's not that great to end on. It's very, very generic. Do you prefer sunny or rainy days? Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I highlighted this is because yeah. there are some days where I'm like, please let it rain because I'm in the type of mood where I just want rain. And then other days, like, I need the sun. So, yeah. You know. And who knows? Everyone has a different opinion on. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just grateful for the days at this point. Yeah. You know, rainy days seem to everybody seems to be quieter and calmer. And I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm quieter and calmer. Yeah. So yeah. sunny days are wonderful. But it, it, I, you know, when they get to be over 100 degrees, I'm just, mm not participating thank you very much i'm inside yeah so i no go problem. from house to car to you know to store to car yes. I'm, I'm not a, <laughs> i'm not an outside kid i don't like being hot so. i uh i tried to go outside yesterday because i needed i felt like i needed to sit in the sun for a second and so i brought out my mat and i sat on the ground and i was like Five minutes later, I'm going back inside. It's way too hot just to sit here. I'll just get the sun from my window. Yeah. It's too hot. Give me a nice fan in the sun. Even yeah. then, it's like blowing heat on you. That's right. It's, it is. So think about being at the reunion out in the park. I mean, you know, and dripping. Yeah. Okay, actually, let's do a few of the this or that. So just so you guys watching the video, this I found this at Target. It's 3,000 pick one questions. 
and it doesn't have an author. I'm assuming it's just, oh, it's by Pickett. You want to you tell everybody where we got this idea from, the question books? Do you know, do you remember? <clears throat> One my time on vacation with your, with your mom and Uncle Brian and Papa and I, we were driving from Texas to Florida to visit friends. Oh, yeah. And of course, that long drive is just boring. So we, I had picked up this book and I, I can't find it. I have no idea where it is uh, or what the name of it was. It's just, it was a book of questions. So, and it had some serious questions. So we all decided it was a game you were supposed to be able to play. And uh, the rule was you had to be honest with your answer. <laughs> so, and it had questions like, um, where do you want to be? If you could choose anywhere, where would you like to be when you die? You know, and that one I remember because Papa said that he'd like to be on the golf course. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> I remember that one. Um, but the kids, your mom and, and Uncle Brian were so amazed at the answer to some of our questions that I think it was a way for them to really get to know us yeah. when they didn't know what to ask us, you know. So uh, it, was, it was a very interesting uh, game to play. And of course we did it for hours because I think it took us like 16 hours or something to get to Florida. But yeah, so that's, so when we started doing these podcasts that came back to my brain yeah. and uh, looking for question books ever since. So yeah. Uh, and then that. whenever uh, at the uh, gathering on Saturday, Baba yeah. gave me a question book and then Later that day, I went, or the next day, I went to Target, and there was two books left on um, questions, and I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> grab $10 a, a book. Yeah. <laughs> so we are ready. <laughs> ready. Yeah, we have three, well, technically 6,000 plus the other question book we yeah. have that's pretty serious. <laughs> oh, we'll be boring people forever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one, it's just this or that, all right? Okay. Dancing or singing? I can dance. <laughs> so I say dancing. Dance. Okay. Yogurt or cottage cheese? Cottage cheese. <laughs> Ugh, yogurt. Okay. Mix or match? I know the answer to this. <laughs> Mix or match? Uh, as in, I'm not sure. Anything? Mm, mix. <laughs> mix, yeah. Okay, I don't know the answer to this, but I think I might have an idea. Sweet pickles or dill pickles? Oh, dill pickles. Really? I thought you were going to pick sweet pickles. No, I love dill pickles. I love dill pickles. Way more than sweet pickles. <laughs> Me too. Okay, salad or coleslaw? Salad. Cake or cookies? Cookies. Same. Foot massage or back massage? Oh gosh, what a decision. I'm Ooh, back. back. I'm too ticklish on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Although I love a good pedicure. I'm not gonna ask you this one, but one of the questions is <laughs> start rumors or spread gossip? <laughs> That's horrible. That's horrible. I tried to do neither. But if I, I had to it. choose, <laughs> Spread the gossip. <laughs> I was going to say, I try to do neither, but you and I are pretty good at gossiping, aren't we? <laughs> Just spread the gossip in a small group of people. In a small group. Just between two. <laughs> yeah. It's not gossip. We're just talking. We're just talking. <laughs> okay. Soft tacos or crunchy tacos? Crunchy. Crunchy. I think I have to be in the mood for, I don't know. I like crunch in anything. Okay. Croissant or scone? A scone. Yeah, me too. Croissants are too buttery. Yeah. Too much bread in a croissant. Yeah. Okay. We'll end it with this one. Pancakes or waffles? <laughs> waffles. Yes, me too. <laughs> I got to write, uh, write them down and highlight. All right. How do you feel about our questions and our this or that being answered? I think that's pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, it that keeps us nice. from, from being too involved in self, doesn't it? Yeah. Although, 
they can apply to self. Yeah. Make it a little bit more interesting for anyone who happens to happens upon us. Right? Yeah. And they can answer those questions for themselves. Yeah. Look, some of these are I was flipping through. I was like, oh, I gotta save these for a really good day. I gotta <laughs> make sure I plan out. We've got something else coming up, right? Yeah. Oh, I wanted to tell you since we've got everybody on the podcast. So, you know, I'm taking that marketing course that I told you about. Yeah. And uh, one of the challenges that they, it's <coughs> optional, you don't have to do it, but it's a 90 day challenge. And for 90 days, you have to put out information using either audio, video, or written. And so uh -huh. I submitted a question on Facebook and asked all the, the people in my Facebook group what they would be more interested in seeing. And they all chose written, like 70% chose written. And oh, I really? had like three votes on the video, no votes on the podcast. But I think people, they don't want me to talk about health on the podcast. <laughs> they want it to be, you know, about you and I. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so on Monday, I started this 90 day challenge and I'll be putting out a blog every single day. And I've come up with like 58 topics so far. Good. I've already written like 10 and they're super like micro blogs, super short. So if you yeah. guys are listening, you got to visit maddiebwellness.com and start, you know, paying attention to my blogs, read my stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll try to remember to do that. Yeah. I I'm wondering if I should make an announcement every single day, but I don't know. Probably. Well, you I can probably send an will. email when you when you do it. You can send it just a quick email, another note from Maddie B Wellness. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put. Um, I'll send two emails a week. Oh no! What? Yeah, you you stall. Rose. Oh yeah, it happens. Yeah, you know, I was testing you. <laughs> <laughs> See if I'm really paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I did read your thing on uh, oil, on oh, uh, the canola oil. Mm -hmm. I'm so disappointed. Um, I wonder, but they didn't mention grapeseed oil. I Do you know about that. So from the few, okay. So I follow this woman who's a registered dietitian. Her name is Kelly Levesque. And she's a holistic nutritionist, excuse me, not an uh, RD. And then I follow yeah, a few other RDs. All of them say that grapeseed oil is highly inflammatory. Oh, really? Yeah. So to so, avoid it. So for frying foods, if you've got to fry anything, then the avocado oil yes. is the best. Or coconut oil. Or the de-perfumed coconut oil if you don't want the coconut because in that article it said something about unless there's a extra process the coconut oil tastes oh like yeah coconut. yeah um what is it yeah because i've tried making eggs with coconut oil and it makes the eggs taste sweet yeah so unless yeah i would just do avocado oil that's what i use whenever i am using high heat well i i actually do a lot of of uh, like eggs and stuff, I use uh, olive oil. I yeah. know it's not because I don't fry eggs on high heat. So uh, yeah, I uh, well, I recently listened to a podcast about this guy who's like <laughs> an expert in olive oil, and uh, he says that you can use olive oil for anything, for high heat, low heat, um, and to like drizzle it on your food. It's like super good for you. So that's what I've been doing with olive oil. Yeah. <clears throat> well, maybe if you use a combination of olive oil and uh, coconut or avocado, then it, it's it'll be fine. Yeah. Because so, I use cool. the olive oil with sometimes when I use uh, butter or ghee. Um, oh, yeah. I I use some olive oil with that because that sort of lets it. I feel like it tempers either. Yeah. So. Yeah. I like ghee. Yeah. Ghee tastes it's, good. It's good to work with. Have you so. seen the vanilla ghee? Uh-uh. 
They have like a vanilla bean flavored D. I need to send you a picture of it. Tastes good on toast. That's it. On cinnamon raisin toast. Uh, That's what I've been doing. <laughs> You're eating toast? Well, of course, it's keto. <laughs> It's made with most fiber. I was fiber. going to say, I eat toast. You don't eat toast. Yeah. It's, a, it's by a brand called Base Culture. I'm putting it in my next blog, actually. So yeah. <clears throat> I tried the Ezekiel bread. In fact, I have some in the freezer. Mm -hmm. and it's pretty good. But, yeah, it's good. But it's got so many seeds. And, um, of course, the best part is the crunchy crust. Yeah. <laughs> With the seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, Papa's not having any of it. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I've i been hearing, I didn't even know this, that sourdough can actually be healthy for you. Oh, really? Because of all the cultures in it. Yeah. Um, it's like a, it can, like usually the, the inflammatory, the inflammation, excuse me, that's going on in our gut is from yeast from uh -huh. bad bacteria, bacteria infection from yeast. And uh, apparently the sourdough can bring out the good bacteria and lower the bad bacteria. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a tip. Sourdough is one of my favorites. Yeah, so. mine too. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I think we did it. Number 10, 10th episode <laughs> is out and it's live. Thank you to all of those people who are even interested in this. Yes, we, we appreciate you. We, we'll, we are amazed. <laughs> we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye.